action. Hello, and welcome back. We're in the kitchen because today is the day that we make it nicer. It's not a terrible kitchen if you saw our apartment tour, but it could be nicer. So today we're making it happen. I just said that. Let me start by telling you some of the issues that we have with the kitchen. First of all, it's a rental and like most New York City kitchens, it's really not that big and it doesn't really have that much storage. You're looking at it and you're saying, girl, what is cabinets and drawers on this wall right here? But that's, that's the drawer. That's how far this comes out. And these cabinets are only as deep as this wall right here. So that's to say they're not very deep at all. So we don't really have that much storage. As you can tell, we've done little in the way of making the space feel pretty or homey and we want to change that. And we just want to, you know, try to scrub off some of the basicness of it. It's a very basic rental kitchen and we just want to, you know, kick it up a notch. Was that Emerald? Emerald. We want to kick it up a notch. Three things we're going to fix. We're going to scrub off some of the basic rental kitchenness of it. We're going to make it feel a lot more homey and cozy and warm and like us. And we're going to solve some storage solutions. So let's talk about the plan. Our plan is to add some sticky tiles to this side of the kitchen. We're going to change out the knobs on all of the cabinets. We're going to add a shelf in this space for a bit more storage. We're going to add a hanging basket in front of the window for like fruits and vegetables. We're going to put a new cart here uh, to replace this small one so we have a bit more storage and then just add some like general touches that make the kitchen a bit more functional and a bit more decorative. So we're going to get started with the tile backsplash. Let's go. I saw this idea on another channel where I don't remember, I think it's homemade modern. I'll be sure to link it down in the description, but it was a video about this guy does like things to actual homes that homeowners own. And he took a hexagon tile, but like real tile with grout and all of that jazz and kind of created this like mountainous situation where like the tiles were kind of not, it wasn't just straight across. And I thought that that was a really cool idea. And since our space is like partly closed, partly open, and we're gonna add that shelf, I thought it would be something nice to try in our space. So after searching high and low, ooh, it was so hard trying to find hexagon sticky tiles, but I found some and I think that they will actually work because I'll, we do not plan to put anything on our countertops, but I, cause I actually like them. And they're brown with a little bit of black, little bit of gray, but the floor is gray. So I thought that this gray and white kind of works. So we're gonna try and do that same thing, but with these sticky tiles because we're renters. So let's get to it. This is the area along this wall that we're going to add the tile to. And why I think this will be good is because you can see that this tile would take up, it would, I don't like it. So I think creating, you know, mountainous would work. Also over here where we have our knives hanging, it would be nice if this was below it. So we're gonna just wing it a little bit and create some low things and let's start here. We did order extra tiles in case, you know, we messed it up in the beginning. <laughs> so we're gonna try, we're gonna start here by squaring up this side and creating a little situation. Okay, we're getting to work. We're gonna clear off our workspace and when you're using sticky tiles, you definitely wanna start by 
cleaning the surface that you're going to stick the tiles to. If you're in the kitchen, you should probably try and use something with a degreasing agent just to make sure there aren't, you know, bits and pieces of food or grease left on the wall that you're going to stick your tiles to. So when we started using the tiles, we tested the X-Acto knife and the scissors and found that the scissors definitely uh, worked better for cutting through the tile part, like the thicker part. Uh, and I am admittedly not good with straight lines, so this job <laughs> became Sean's job. But when we were trying to create those straight lines for the bottom, we were just using the white grout lines um, as our guide to create that straight bottom. And we were using the white grout lines because we want the tiles to look, you know, as natural and as much like tile as possible. So we were using them as a guide. So we started by scoring the tile first with the X-Acto knife and then going in with the scissors and cutting that straight line. So we were just looking at the tiles and trying to decide what edges we needed to cut. This is one that we already did some tests on, but we're thinking that we're gonna put the tile this way. So I've cut this edge flat so that it goes flush against the um, little sh black splash or lip that this is here. And we're going to use the flat tops of the tile to be the edge that we're putting up here so if we put it this way or if we put it this way right so that this edge was here then this would be uneven and we would also need to cut this edge and then the pointy parts would be up here but I think we're gonna go this way all right now that we've squared up the edges it's time to start putting that design in there and really, I just freehanded this. I did kind of try to go low around outlets and kind of where our hands would need to grab those knives. Um, but other than that, like whatever my heart desires. I am trying to keep the white grout lines across the top as well, just so that again, the tiles look as realistic as possible. And then I'm just, you know, holding it up and trying to get a feeling for what this will look like. Is the idea as good as I thought it was? <laughs> but it turns out it is, so it was great. So I just kept cutting, going right along, and I used a little bit of tape just to hold the pieces in position. As I finished one, I would hold it up with a piece of tape and then use that as a like, okay, here's what I want the next one to do. And like I said, go low around the outlets. Just, you know, get creative with it. Once one tile is laid, the tile that I lay next to it, I am putting the white, overlapping the white grout line so that it looks more seamless. Yeah, it really took shape very easily, actually. It was um, a very easy product to work with. Uh, it was pretty forgiving if you stuck it down and weren't exactly happy. Um, or made a mistake, it was pretty easy to peel off and stick back again. And yeah, I thought it was a great way to create a background, or I thought that the idea that I got from um, the other video actually worked really well with these tiles. And it was a great way to personalize something uh, that can look kind of boring, you know? Not just subway tile, like lots of people have have tried, you can do something else with this sticky tile. All right, so we have finished the tile. If I'm honest, I wish the color was darker. It definitely looked different in the photo online, but we're gonna live with it for now and see how we like at the end. We're ready though now to work on hanging a shelf onto this wall. 
and uh, yeah, we're still not professionals. <laughs> You've seen us drill into walls a couple times now, but we're still kind of figuring it out as we go. So let's get started on this wall. Well, you can't use a leveler because I'm literally holding it with my hands. Well, in order to mark the holes level, we have to make sure it's level, right? No? Yeah. I mean, t I'm actually asking because I don't know. You should mark the edges and then mark the top of this. So mark. Is this where you want it? How do you feel about it? What does it say in the instructions? Do what we do. Uh, perfect to me. <laughs> you only gotta put this many things in the wall? No, we don't have to do all of them. If we do up, down, we can like alternate up, down. I'll mark them all. We can pick which ones we do. This is definitely freaking the weakest freaking thing. You ready? Action. Okay. That's a boop. <laughs> We need different types of anchors. We gotta go to the hardware store to get anchors. And I don't know if you can see in the background of the photos, but it's snowing outside. Perfect texture for onions. Well, what's the size? What size is that one? 316. It's the same size. One fourth? Oh no, three one fourth is bigger than one sixteenth. We had to come out in the snow. Sean? I hate this. <laughs> but we got some anchors. Watched a quick video. It's not exactly what we saw in the video, but hopefully it'll work. Get a thumbs up. <laughs> Sean's not in a great mood. I'm not putting that in the video. Well, why don't you do something we can't put in the video? I'm putting my thumb down in the video. Alright, we'll see how much of this makes it in the video. McDonald's is so packed. It's always packed. Alright, we got anchors. Now we gotta tear 15 <laughs> mega size holes into a wall. <laughs> okay. Oh, Biggest hole I've ever seen in my put life. Your, put your finger in there. <laughs> Just to give this a little context, all the other walls in our apartment that we've drilled or hammered into have been made out of concrete. But of course, this wall was made out of drywall and we have never hung anything on a drywall wall. So we quickly figured out that we needed to use a drywall anchor, but the anchors that we chose to use involve you drilling a much larger hole in order to fit the anchor through it because it has a hinge. So yeah. That's why we were, we were so confused. We messed up. So we got the bracket on the wall. 
And we're ready to put the shelf on, but we just realized that we put the shelf on, the bracket on upside down. So that's okay. The screws will have to go on the top, but it's okay. I knew I'd figure out a way to do that. Oh, and it comes up the hole. Sweet. Where are the screws? Feels okay. Feels pretty good. We can carry some rice. Yeah. Feels good. It feels good. It's a shelf. It's a shelf! An invisible shelf. It's a floating shelf! Oh, Jesus, help us. Okay, so it's been <laughs> a couple of hours we've been at this, but we have this part of the tile, the sticky tile done, and we got the shelf up. That shelf gave Sean a lot of issues, but it is up and it is on. And now the tile we're liking, but we're on the fence. It does match the floor nicely, but it doesn't match the backsplash. It, the tile, the picture from online is just a little bit off what it, we're actually seeing so we're going to go ahead and change the knobs with these amazon knobs um, that are black and see once that change happens in the kitchen if we want to continue the tile onto this wall here i'm thinking that we probably will but we'll see so now we're on to knobs and they even come with screws so literally all you have to do is unscrew your knob, put them all in a plastic bag, which we will do so that we will hold on to them so we can change them back when we leave and um, put on our own knobs. Let me show you the knobs. So the knobs are small black pulls with an indentation for your finger on the bottom. So like that. We're going to go ahead and time lapse, change the knobs. Let's go. Okay, it's been many hours, guys, <laughs> but we're, we're rolling with it. We're finding a place on the floor because we need to put together the cart. <clears throat> we got the cart from Ikea. Ikea, one of my favorite places to find organizational furniture at a very reasonable price. So we're going to put this together and switch it out with the small white um, cart that we currently have in the kitchen holding our cookbooks and some plants and yeah. Nisiphorus. 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 Where do you get the extra sources? Nisiphorus. Nisiphorus. Huh? Don't be a hater, Sean. I'm about to put this together so fast. Don't take no mess from nobody. Click.
That's pretty good. It's fine. How do you start if not with so or okay? I'm saying, but how do you start without so or okay? All right. <laughs> All right, we have all of the major components in the room. We have our shelf up, we have our tile up, we have our cart put together and put in, and now it is time to get to the fun part. It's been all day, y'all. It is 8.21 p.m. I think we started filming right around noon or so. <laughs> so it, we're finally getting to the fun part where we can put our decorative elements in the space, move around the storage that we have planned, fill our cart and make it all pretty. So we're gonna do it. Home stretch, we see the end. This super fun bowl is available in my shop, stickyicky.com, that I will link in the description. And this little bug bowl, not available just yet, but made by the same lady. So I just wanted to highlight these two fun products. Last night, as we were vacuuming up, because we were all done and just waiting for the morning to get these last reveal shots, I remembered my beautiful teapot that I got in Cape Town, um, and I wanted to add it to the kitchen. So I'm gonna add it up here on the shelf. With our tea. And, I think that's it. It is the next day. <laughs> I'm wearing the same clothes, but that's what they do on HGTV, right? I mean, right? We're getting ready for the reveal. This was a lot of hours of work, a day of work, 
and we're pretty proud of ourselves. So please be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments and let's get to those reveal shots. All right, you've seen the reveal shots. What did you think? I think it went pretty well. So as always, I wanna thank you for watching this channel. Please be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it as well. Follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes info and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.